So recall that uh, what are, we're really interested in doing um, is to look at structure function relationships. Uh, and we're going to start this by looking at proteins in particular. And in practice, though, how do we actually do this? Well, first, what we need to do is we need to purify the protein. We need to be able to obtain the protein that, so that we can study it. And this is actually a several step process uh, because the proteins, uh, remember, these are biological entities. So we have to get these, uh, for instance, from uh, cells. And sometimes we get these from native cells, for instance, proteins from human cells or bacterial cells. Uh, either way, what we need to do first is we need to culture these cells. So that means growing them somehow in the lab so that we can prepare enough cells uh, so that we can somehow isolate the protein from these cells. The next thing is, now that we've made the cells, the proteins are inside the cell. Uh, they're encapsulated within the cell in some way. So we have to break the proteins out. So this is called lysis. And we can do that by a variety of ways, such as using um, sound waves, uh, strong pulses of sound waves to lyse the cells, uh, or chemical means, or we can use pressure. Once we've done that, now we have this mixture of cell components, such as uh, lipids from the cell membrane, uh, complex carbohydrates from the cell wall, if this is a bacterium. Um, we also have DNA within the mix and other proteins. And so the first thing we usually do is we try to separate out uh, the soluble fraction from the insoluble fraction. And so we do this uh, using a centrifuge which spins very fast, um, and what we do is when we put test tubes inside the centrifuge, what we get are two fractions. So we get an insoluble fraction that we call the pellet. And then Above the pellet, we get the soluble fraction. Oops. Called supernatant. And so, depending on what type of protein we're looking at, so let's say we're looking for a protein in the soluble fraction, we'll keep either keep the supernatant or keep the pellet. If it's a soluble protein, uh, something that we would expect to see in the cytosol, uh, we'll keep the supernatant. If it's insoluble uh, or in the insoluble fraction, such as a membrane protein, uh, then we would keep the pellet. Uh, but after we uh, clear out uh, whether the cell debris, um, we now uh, have to purify our protein from other proteins uh, that are within the cell. And so this is uh, a large part of uh, what you need to do first before you can actually study a protein. And when I say purify, what I mean is you need to isolate uh, the protein from other proteins. So for instance, in this slide on the right-hand side, uh, we have uh, what looks like the soluble fraction. And there is a mixture of proteins, and they're uh, colored either red, green, or yellow uh, in, this, in this figure. So let's say our target protein is the green protein. And so what we need to do then to get after the green protein is we need to purify all the proteins out. And we do this by collecting fractions into test tubes. And we'll get over, uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, very shortly uh, about how you're able to separate these proteins like this. And let's say we're able to uh, separate the yellow proteins from the green proteins, from the blue protein, from the red protein. And then, again, if we're looking to purify the green protein so we can study it, then this is the fraction we want. So this is called fractionation. And you do this by a variety of ways. 
But what's key is that after you fractionate the proteins, if you, after you separate all the proteins within the cell, you have to be able to detect which protein is actually yours. And so uh, that, that's actually, in, in this case, we have it color coded, but in practice, uh, not all uh, proteins are actually colored like this in the diagram. So you need a variety of different ways to be able to detect proteins uh, so that you know uh, that you actually have the protein that you're looking to purify.